Now, I am very happy to announce that the big change finally happened, and I am extremely excited to see what it will bring. And besides the new change that we made within the corp, uh, the the wormholes might might actually be a thing. Uh, today we had a very nice chat with one of the developers in the in the general chat on the official Discord, and they said that they wanted us to give them ideas uh, for wormholes. Basically, they they were looking for players who have experience with wormholes. And well, I think you guys know what that means. Now I, I don't know when the wormholes will be released. I don't know the details, but. I'm almost 100% sure that they are on the way, and honestly, that is kind of exciting. Uh, I was looking for, for that for two or three years now. Uh, wormholes in this game will be extremely exciting and should be very interesting. So all of you guys who are, who are looking to be Wormhole Corps, you might get the chance to do so very soon. Now there are also some other details that I know that th I'm not uh, that I'm not you know allowed to share because of the NDA, but I can definitely tell you interesting times up ahead. So that change and the the new content that's that's coming is definitely going to make this game a lot more fun and a lot more interesting. And of course, uh, still waiting for them to to nerf the some of the implants. I think they, they I mean, I have to say, they did a good job with the nerfing so far. There's still room f room for improvement, but I would say that they did nerf a lot of them. There's still, again, as I said, room for improvement. But but today it will be time to do some uh, some PvP, I guess, uh, in a way to kind of celebrate the the change that's happening and. There's going to be a lot of, let's say, new and different type of combat in the upcoming days. So excited to see how that plays out. Now I'll have to move a bunch of my ships to the new home, which is going to be hilarious because I have to do, I think it was like 60 or 70 jumps. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it's literally like in the middle of nowhere and I love it. Uh, very exciting, very excited to to see how that journey goes. Perhaps I will, I might record that. I don't know, I mean, defi definitely not me to live stream because I'll, I'll definitely get killed if I live stream that, but it should be quite a interesting, uh, interesting journey. So, with that being said, sit back, grab some popcorn or, you know, uh, grab a drink, a beer, or whatever you like to drink, or or eat while watching a movie or something. And with that being said, let's jump right in. Okay, preparing to warp to the first target for today, and let me see what do we have here. We have a Vindicator, that's going to be fun. Okay, warping I am in my orders. For a second I almost said that I'm flying the RB. I would actually fly the RB if I had longer points. Because you know, I, I definitely do not do not want to be close to a Vindicator because they have a very very strong status. Well before I mean they have a bonus on them, so you definitely don't want to brawl a Vindicator with a cruiser or frigate because that's usually not going to end well. But the Ortus can kite, it's one of the best kiting ships in the game, and I'll and I'll, I'll admit I haven't been flying this ship that often lately, so I definitely want to return to the Ortus a bit more. Now this is a horrible warping, oh no, I landed right in the web range, that, that was, for a second I, I thought I was dead, I was, uh, for a second I, I thought I was dead for, but yeah, I'm alive. The Ortus is not the fastest, but the, it's still a speedy little boat. We're not the fastest attack. of of cruisers, but you know it's still not slow. It's quite speedy, so it's not a big problem to quickly gain distance from the target. I have dual tracking disruptors, just so that I make the blasters on the vin on the vindicator a little bit useless at long range. Although even I mean, even without the tracking disruptors, I think they can hit me at this distance. But you know, just just to be just to be safe, because knowing my luck, I usually stumble upon a extremely tanky ship, or I stumble upon something that has insane range and tracking. So just to minimize the the danger to my ship, just in case they have range, 
I have the tracking disruptors equipped and they do use quite a bit of capacitor but I have the capacitor battery so it should not be a big problem. Now the Ortus has that capacitor problem. Uh, the, the problem started to occur after they changed the cycle time and energy consumption of the micro warp drive. That's, uh, that's the... That's the thing that's drastically ruined my, my capacitor runtime on the Ortus. It used to run much better, but nowadays the, the, the capacitor on the Ortus is not really the best. Okay, now this Finicator does have a tank build. They have one large, ex uh, one large booster and I believe a full-on shield tank build, but at this, at this distance I should be uh, I should be safe. We also have a friendly vindicator on the grid that helped at removing the shield of the battleship in a very short time frame. The vindicator is now into hole. They decided to shoot at my friends, but my friend has a very good very good tank, so they are safe. The vindicator is a is left in a little bit of hole. And there we go. Vinicator has been destroyed. Nice. Okay, that was a solid kill. And a good catch. Haven't used the Ortus in a while. Very glad that I'm not rusty with this ship. After all, this is one of my best ships of all time. Alongside with the Revelation 3.35 billion, not bad. A very good loot drop, but I, I will give the loot to my friends for helping me out. And surprisingly, no stabs. Usually, usually they have stabs. Now I thought about taking my Makari out, but you know, let's just fly cruisers for a bit. Let's do some good old cruiser we'll versus battleship okay. because why not? I used to do that all the time back in the day. I mean, I still do it, but nowadays uh, because of the oh, because of the stabs, I just. Uh, go with the Macariel or with the Megatron Striker because they have like three three scrammers equipped and they do they still do take a hit even if they don't have that much of a tank but flying flying cruisers is my speciality I, I love these ships I have the best skills for cruisers and, uh, and honestly love to uh, to fly this thing. So, my game here um, stopped respawning for some reason. Very glad that this happened after I after I fought that Vindicator because if this would have happened while in combat, it would have been quite hilarious. Now the Vindicator had a a micro warp drive and they did have a solid tank. So yeah, definitely an okay build. I mean, it's a shield tank, Warp it's a but it can work, I guess. Now let's go to the next target. The good old Stratios. So oh man, now uh, for war for wormholes, I, I think first I'll get to know them with a Aster, and afterwards when I get to know the wormholes, uh, I will use the Stratios and Nestor. I have the Nestor, I have the Stratios, which both are fantastic wormhole ships, but just you know, to to get to know the space first, uh, I'll I'll use something that is more mobile and a bit more difficult to catch. After all, the wormhole space is quite uh, let's say active. quite hostile and quite dangerous. I mean, it's kind of the same thing actually, but you you get what I'm trying to say here. I, it is a very interesting space that does not forgive mistakes, and should be quite interesting to see how that rose out in this game. Honestly, very very excited for wormholes actually. Because it is something that's, that I have been recommending to developers for a while. I, I've been giving them a lot of intel, a lot of information about what players uh, want to see and gave them a lot of ideas for different content. And I'm very happy that I actually listened to that. So when you don't scream to the developers, they, they actually do listen. A bit of kindness goes a long way as you can see. So let's see what we have here. Now we have a rupture. The reason why I'm in the status or not anything else is because there is no good warping to to this boat. So 
the the best option that I have here was to use the Stratius or the other option would be to use the Celos or some of the other ships, but it wouldn't end well because there is no good I mean no good warping and the Rapture is a is a mobile ship. Mobile ship. It is a cruiser after all, so it can easily warp away uh, if I mess up. So a stealth approach is the way to go and for that purpose I have no other ship than the Stratius. So that's the the backstory on why I did pick this ship instead of picking something more appropriate to the to targets. I mean the Stratius is quite appropriate for the for the job. It does a a very good job at at PvP and of course at PvE. I love I love my Nestor almost scared to undock since it costs so much lol. I'm ju I'm just reading for uh, the, the the live chat here. Well, it's true. The the Nestor is honestly extremely expensive, and you can expect the ship's price to go up when wormholes are released since. The Nestor is one of the... I think it's literally the only battleship that has such a low mass so that, that when it enters a wormhole it doesn't kill it. And it, it can enter through a lot uh, of wormholes. Now the only downside for the Nestor at the moment is the fact that it can't cloak. At least not now, but you know, I, I think... <laughs> I think when wormholes are out, Nestor will, uh, will be able to cloak. You know what? I'll actually do something very silly very soon. Uh, I'm not going to say what. I'll, I'll, I'll save that for, let's say, when wormholes are out. Uh, I'll do something very silly today after I finish recording the video. And let's see if it actually happens. Very excited and very interesting. Uh, very interested to see uh, if that can be done. I'm not going to say what, but you, you'll see what I, what I mean uh, when, when wormholes are out, if they get out, of course. But I, I believe that they will, since all of the, all of the indications show that it might be happening. I don't know. So, uh, 16 kilometers away from the rupture, I would say that they might have a micro warp drive equipped on on the crew on the on the rupture, but I'm not really sure. I guess we'll find out very soon. Uh, I'm still approaching with the afterburner. Wave two out of three, perfect, which means I can decloak and immediately tackle. They will be busy. They they will not see me until I tackle them because of the new wave that spawned. Bombard implant active. I'm going to orbit at zero. Scrambled, swept. The rupture is now into armor. The rupture is now into a hole. And just a little bit more, and they are destroyed. They did use the long range artillery cannons, I believe, based on the effect that I that I've seen coming from the ship. So at the close distance that I was at, it wouldn't be. Attack. I wouldn't be taking any damage We're from it. Warp drive active. Okay. Let me align myself towards that location in space so that I can check out the kill. 40 mil, not bad. I mean, it's a rupture. I, I kind of like the build. A kite with a damage control and dual webs. You know, that not bad. It does kind of look interesting. That build kind of looks interesting, not gonna lie. Alright, now the next target is a Praxis 2. Now, the Praxis 2 is kind of a, a faction battleship, and it's one of those ships that can be used for exploration. I mean, the the Jovian ships do have some exploration stats attached to them, Warp and drive active. They, they're kind of interesting. The Praxis 2 is I would not not really the, the best. I mean, it's a free ship. Well, free. <laughs> you get it for for the um, for purchase for purchasing Omega. So it's not really free, but you know, it's a gift for uh, for getting Omega. And the Praxis one was uh, it, it's 
you know, you know, average. Uh, but the Praxis 2, I kind of like it. Uh, it definitely is a big improvement over the, the normal Praxis, uh, Praxis one. Now, scrambled webs, barrage implant engaged, and disengaged. I double clicked for some reason. Uh, okay, fair enough. Barrage engaged for a second time. I took a big hit on the shield. Not really sure if that's from the drones or from something else. I'm an armor tank, but for some reason I, I clicked on the damage control. I think that's because I was usually running a shield tank, so yeah. Alright, pretty good kill. We're under attack. Let me warp out. It also seems like it drops some very nice warp drive stuff. active. Very nice loot. I mean I say very nice loot. I'm happy if I get any loot, honestly. Since any any loot is a good loot. Isk is not a problem right now. So I'm playing for fun. I'm trying to enjoy the game and I'm trying to share the fun with you guys. Because I mean that's that's a content creator's duty, right? And I think I'm doing a pretty good job at it. I hope I I hope I do. Let's see, 2.3 billion. Hey, that was a. What kind of build is this? Now the Praxis 2 is a very weird ship. It has a bonus on drones. It has a bonus on everything. And and, and I think it should remain a drone boat in the end. So your primary DPS comes from the drones. But the Praxis is definitely quite quite weird because it has I think the same bonus on on everything, including drones. So you basically you can fit it the any way you like. I think. Which is a interesting trait of all the Jovian ships, including the smaller ones. Okay, now we're waiting for the command to jump. We have, I think, a raven at the other end of the gate. Not really, not Please entirely jump. sure. I've been a while since, since I recorded this uh, yeah it is a uh it is a raven all right let's go let's go get the raven fleet warp fleet warp engaged warp drive active That's a long warp. That is a long warp indeed. This is why having a very fast ship is important. You can go and reach the target in a very short time frame, which does reduce the risk of the target moving away from the original position. Also enhances your chances to uh, to tackle them. That was a very quick. That was a very quick kill. I mean, two Macarials, that's a sight to behold. Both have a high level barrage, but actually, my friend has a higher level. I think they have m it's maxed out. Not really sure, I, I forgot to ask, but I think my friend has the barrage plant maxed out. I am on level 33, I believe. Been mostly focusing on some of the other implants, like the, dro like the bomber tactic. And I think I'll be focusing on the thermal circulation implant, but that, that depends on the ship that um that I that I might fly. Uh, I mean, it really depends on the ship that uh, that I decide to fly next. There's a lot of ships that I'm interested in, and I know for a fact that they'll add more ships in the game. So I would suggest that if you don't know what ship to fly, or if you have all the ships that you ever wanted to have, I would suggest that you keep on saving ISK, keep on grinding the ISK. Uh, save a save a lot of this basically, and then in the future there's going to be there's absolutely going to be new ships. Uh, not not only capital, small battleship, but you know smaller stuff that uh, that's going to be very fun. And since wormholes are out, perhaps tier three cruisers, T three cruisers, perhaps more T two cruisers from Evil Nine. I mean, I, I would love a vagabond. I would love that thing. So 
hopefully that's the hopefully that that's the case actually I mean there is so much uh, what, what I heard and what I've been told that I can't really share but <laughs> it's honestly a very interesting thing uh, if all that I've heard is implemented honestly it would be very interesting again I can't share more than that at the moment I'll definitely do share uh, when I'm allowed to so uh, I'm Myrmidon but I had a very bad warping unfortunately and this yeah, uh, I really did not have a lot of luck with uh, with this with this fiend. This fiend been not that lucky lately, and it kind of makes me a little bit mad because this ship is so good. But I, I guess bad luck is one thing that I cannot affect, at least not yet. But. But yeah, uh, this is the reason why I fly the the stealthy ships. We, with stealthy ships, I don't really have to worry about where I land. I can always scout and I can always find a a new warping. That's that's why I like to fly the Stratus and other covered up ships. I, I can minimize the chance of the target escaping, which you know uh, you have to rely on, on a little bit of luck when you are uh, when you are engaging a target without uh, scouting first. Although I did scout the Myrmidon, but somehow they were not at the same place where I landed. So yeah, that's why the stealth is. That's why stealth Fleet. is important, Warp and that's why I'm active. slowly moving back to my old routes with the core top ships because that's where I was doing really well. I mean, the Orc was also kind of. If you have long range points, you don't have to worry about uh, landing far away from the target. The Orthos can easily tackle ships like that, but the, the other ships that don't have a long range point can be a little bit more difficult. And for a aligned ship, We're you definitely need to have a, a cloaky tackle. No, and uh, this is, I think, the, the last target for today. Uh, we have a Dominix. Warp drive active. We are warping, my friend warped first, that's perfect. My friend has a lot of uh, a lot of points at long range, so it, it does work really well uh, for them to land first and tackle the target. But unfortunately these Dominics did smell that something was wrong and they aligned on time and they escaped. Oh well, it happens, not a big deal. Only a Dominix, so not a, not a big problem was still a very nice attempt. Alright, well, that was, a, that was a very nice little run today. Might be a little bit shorter than usual because uh, while recording this I'm actually trying to move a lot of my ships to uh, to the new, let's say, location, to the new home. And since I have to do a lot of jumps through a very dangerous territory, uh, I'll be uh, trying to move the ships uh, without getting killed so so yeah uh, wish me luck on that because I'll probably need uh, need that luck to to safely go to the new to the new home of course the good old Sixy is going to remain Sixy uh, that's still going to be home in one way or another but definitely looking forward to see what what happens and uh, definitely excited for the for the new combat and content that's going to be up ahead. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and as always, I'll see you next time.